Hey there, movie buffs looking for a film that's part comedy, part mystery, and all-around entertaining. Well, look no further because the 1970 movie Brewster McCloud has got you covered. This quirky flick follows the story of a young man who lives in the Houston Astrodome and dreams of flying like a bird. But Brewster's not just any ordinary guy, he's got some strange secrets up his sleeve that'll keep you guessing till the end. As you watch, get ready for a roller coaster of emotions because Brewster McCloud is packed with funny, shocking, and even sad moments that'll have you glued to the screen. Want to know which classic Hollywood actor steals the show? You'll have to watch and find out. Now, here's a question for you. Can you share a personal story of how this movie has inspired or impacted your life? We'd love to hear your thoughts and memories in the comments below. So keep watching and get ready for a wild ride with Brewster McCloud. The 1970 film Brewster McCloud had a unique story and interesting characters. It still matters today in cinema. The movie is remembered for its different way of telling a story and its exploration of themes like running away and following dreams. Even now, Brewster McCloud is important because it talks about being yourself and having hope. One reason the movie is still relevant is because it connects with people of all ages. The main character, Brewster, wants to fly and be free, which many people can relate to. His struggles and successes mean something to anyone who has tried to follow their dreams no matter what. Also, Brewster McCloud did things differently from other movies. The director, Robert Altman, used sound and visuals in new ways that made people feel like they were part of the story. This way of making a movie still inspires filmmakers today. Besides, the movie talks about things that matter today, like how hard it can be to be yourself when everyone wants you to be the same. Brewster's journey reminds us to stay true to who we are and go after what's important. In the end, Brewster McCloud left a mark that's hard to forget. Its themes, unique way of telling a story, and characters still catch people's attention years later. As long as there are people with dreams, Brewster McCloud will be there to remind us to be ourselves and aim high. In Texas, where the movie was filmed, there wasn't much of a movie scene. But after the release of the movie, the Texas Film Commission was set up in 1971. It later became part of the office of the Texas governor in 1991. Robert Altman, who directed the movie, first appeared in a TV series called Combat in 1962. He worked on many films with Altman, including Countdown, MASH, McCabe, and Mrs. Miller, Nashville, The Kane Mutiny Court Martial, and Kansas City. Altman thought Brewster McCloud was his boldest work, showing his unique way of storytelling. He made a story that was different from his other movies, focusing on creativity and new ideas. The movie gives a peek into Altman's special way of making movies and telling stories, making it stand out from other movies at the time. Its influence can be seen throughout Altman's work, leaving a strong impression on audiences. In the movie, Johnson is seen driving west on the Southwest Freeway, passing a road sign where eastbound traffic exits northeast, known to Houstonians as Spur 527. The stretch of the Southwest Freeway was completed in May 1961, and reconstruction was finished in June 26, placing the freeway below grade level. It's notable as the first feature film to be shot inside the Houston Astrodome. During a hot pursuit scene, a billboard near a railroad crossing advertises the former McElbert Chevrolet dealership, with two Houston locations, one on North Shepard and another on South Post Oak at West Belfort. The South Post Oak location became A.J. Foyt Chevrolet in 1973, later sold in the late 1980s, and renamed Techstar Chevrolet until the early 1990s when it was raised, becoming a Kroger Signature Grocery Store in 1995. The North Shepherd location was also redeveloped. In the movie, when Brewster starts flying, the baseball field is empty, but the scoreboard shows the Astros leading the Mets 3-2 in the seventh inning. The main scoreboard displays the time as 9.02 with a flashing message paging 07. At the beginning, what seems like an editing mistake is actually a deliberate joke by Altman for the opening credits. There appear to be two repeat title sequences, both with MGM, Adler Phillips, Lion's Gate production, and the film's title appearing twice. However, this repetition is connected to Daphne Heap's request to stop the band and repeat the fanfare in the correct key. When Brewster and Suzanne visit Astroworld theme park, they go on the Lost World River Adventure, later renamed the River of No Return in 1976. Astroworld, part of the Six Flags Empire, closed after October 31, 2005, and was completely demolished in February 2006. 
Brewster McCloud, a film from the early 1970s, features a memorable chase scene set on a former Houston Belt and Terminal Rail Line. This location, situated west of Ardmore Street in the Riverside subdivision, was decommissioned and later demolished in the early 1980s during the construction of State Highway 288. Originally titled Brewster McCloud's Amazing Sexy Flying Machine, the movie premiered inside the Astrodome. At the time, Harris County Judge Roy Hoffhaints, who controlled the dome, attempted to sell tickets for cars to drive in and watch the movie. When this plan failed, VIPS watched the screening from folding chairs placed on the field. The film offers a unique blend of comedy and drama, showcasing the inventive spirit of its protagonist as he navigates through a series of unconventional adventures. In the movie Brewster McCloud, Louise drives an AMC Gremlin. Gremlins were originally mischievous spirits who caused malfunctions in flying machines. The film features many Altman ensemble regulars such as Shelley Duvall, Bud Court, Sally Kellerman, Michael Murphy, Rene Aubergenois, John Shuck, and Bert Rumsen. A single 70mm print of the film was struck for its premiere in the Houston Astrodome to be shown in front of over 23,000 people. By all accounts, it was a disaster with terrible sound problems. Michael J. Pollard, well known for his unique roles, showed great interest in playing the main character in the movie when it had the funny title, The Amazing Sexy Flying Machine, which burst from the clouds. This interesting title suggests the playful and surreal style that later became typical of Altman's work. It wasn't until Robert Altman took charge as director that the film really started to come together. Before Altman got involved, William Wyndham, another skilled actor, won an Emmy Award, which meant he had to quickly go back to Los Angeles for the ceremony. After the excitement of the awards night, Wyndham promptly returned to the movie set, ready to start working on his role the very next morning. This shows how dedicated, experienced actors like Wyndham can be to their work. The mysterious character at the center of the story, known as the Houston Strangler, adds a sense of suspense and mystery to the plot. His presence looms large over the characters, creating a feeling of fear and uncertainty as they deal with the twists and turns of the story. In the middle of all the chaos of making the movie, Brewster McCloud becomes a key character, his journey connecting with the other characters in unexpected ways. Whether he's flying through the air or dealing with his own personal struggles, Brewster's character helps explore the movie's main ideas. In the end, the movie goes beyond its odd title and different plot points to give audiences a thought-provoking and visually impressive cinematic experience thanks to the creative direction of Robert Altman and the excellent performances of the cast. This story, full of surprises, captures people's imaginations and leaves a strong impression even after the movie ends.